if I still want to fuck you afterwards, then I will. If I don't, then it was a mistake. What a tip, honestly. Well, because then you end up doing this where you're like, I gotta go home and change my cum-covered shorts and just never show, uh, come back. <laughs> After telling him your cock was rock hard. <laughs> <laughs> Messy. Look at that good old piece of brown chalk, just chocolating it up in that Kona. Look at him go. Look at him sir. Look at him work. Look at him making that money, bitch. Can you not even see me all the way back here? So racism. I watched a racist movie so you guys don't have to. Yep, I guess that's what we're titling this today. I totally did not tweet out the title of this video literally like two weeks ago. No, I just came up with the title right now. I am a genius. I do genius shit. I produce genius-ism. I genify the geniosities of geniusness. Have you, have you seen, seen this, seen this, seen this, seen my genius, 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 bitch? No, you haven't. It is right here in front of you. Eat it up. Okay, so racism. The movie was called Loquisha. It was a movie that was kind of going around the Twitter sphere for like a good few months last year. It, <laughs> it was a lot. Okay. A man auditions to be a radio show host, but then doesn't get it because he's white. Oh. I guess because he's white. But that doesn't stop him there. He then decides to pretend to be a black woman in order to get the show and have success for the sake of glory. <laughs> Basically, it's a man that pretends to be what he believes is a black woman. Let's underline that. To create a talk show on a radio station that he did not have to do. Okay, that's all. Do I really have to dive deep into this? Just hearing that from the get-go, you're like, wait a minute. What? People had some opinions about that. What the fuck, bitch? What the fuck, bitch? What the fuck are you talking about, bitch? People were yelling racism from left and right. To which the creator of the film then responds with, Hey, white chicks exist. Because the best way to excuse your decisions you make in the present is to bring up a movie created in 2004. Oh, hey. Did I also fail to mention? The creator of this film is also the writer, the director, and main character. That already set some type of standard and ambiance. This man, who I literally just forgot the name of right now, give me a second. Jeremy Saville. Jeremy Saville. Was sitting down one day in his life and just randomly thought, this is an idea that should be existing in the world. Let's get into it. Loquisha. First off, let's talk about the name Loquisha real quick. There's nothing wrong with that name. My mom's name is Keisha. My name is Makazeli, so I can't really judge names in the first place. But at the same time, come on, bitch. He then went on full ass record to say that this name came from no one. It was just a name he randomly came up with right on the spot. Loquisha. The name, the first piece you've probably ever written that included people of color. You went with the name Loquisha. Ah! Uh, Y'all see where I'm going with this? No connection to the name whatsoever. Nothing inspired or sparked the name, apparently. It was just a name he thought would fit. Let's figure out why. They're at a bar. Main character man is a bartender. He's talking to one of his many patrons at this empty ass bar. And straight off from the bat, first 20 seconds. I gotta pretend to be someone I'm not. Slapping you right in the face with a moral. I always say I gotta be me. Otherwise, who else is gonna do it? Okay, sir, calm down. We're literally only one minute in and we're already getting that Disney Channel corny feel about being authentic. Be yourself. Be yourself. Be the black woman inside that we all are. But then it just gets like weirder. The guy then proceeds to walk off. Oh, oh, bitch. I don't know if that was the goal. Maybe he was supposed to look enlightened and all that shit. But all I saw was, how dare you already be yourself? How the hell will you learn the moral of this story at the end? <laughs> And then on top of that, and then what made it even weirder, bartender man says, No one bites the dust. As if this shit has like happened before. Like he's like constantly telling people to be themselves. Cause he's being himself. And these people are like, uh, How dare you? How dare you tell me? Someone who told you they can't be themselves. To be themselves. What do you think this is? Are we suddenly in Camp Rock? Is Demi Lovato suddenly walking down stage giving us a roll call? <laughs> I don't know. Be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. But guess what? This man doesn't end up being himself. This opening was just so off. Cause then, out of nowhere, a man that was just sitting there the entire time randomly appears in shot and says something along the lines of, Wow, I've been coming here for 10 years and you always say the right thing. What's your, What's your secret? secret? <laughs> 
He literally just told a man that was complaining about not being himself to be himself. Suddenly he's the king of all advice. <laughs> Like, how the hell else were you supposed to respond in that situation? I gotta pretend to be someone I'm not. Oh, that's sad, dude. Can't relate. Oh, brah. You can't be yourself, brah? Oh, damn, brah. That sucks, brah. Then the man says something along the lines of, I'm really just talking to myself. Bitch, shut up. Like, what? What? If you thought this movie was gonna be bad based on the pitch itself, the beginning first two minutes of dialogue to just seal the deal right there. We're only two minutes in. But then hold on, kitty. The dialogue just gets worse. Eek, God. A woman comes storming in. A black lady. So there's our representation right there. We did it. We got it. We, there it is. Thank you. An angry black lady on camera. Groundbreaking. First of its kind. I would have never thought. Mister, I've been here for 10 years suddenly gets uncomfortable. Not only does she kind of look like Tiffany Haddish, if Tiffany Haddish grew up being that auntie from down the block, but her line delivery, along with everyone else's line delivery in this film, was just... Give me something strong. <coughs> what are you trying to do, kill me? Choices. Choices. My favorite part, when she finishes her apple juice supposed to be whiskey, whatever the hell movie magic that was, and then just randomly shouts, Men! Men! Who girls say? I, I see them too. Then they get into some type of all men be lying. Hashtag not all men argument. Mr. Bartender Man does some Indian accent. No, curry, madras, lentil, dal. For no plot moving reason whatsoever. And then proceeds to call her a fucking, fucking idiot. idiot. Tells her to stop enabling men or whatever the hell, I don't know. But I think Mr. I just talked to myself was not keeping up to his motto. But let's recap this. I'm not being myself. Just be yourself, man. <gasps> wow. Woman comes in, men be lying. You're a fucking, fucking idiot. idiot. <laughs> it's only been two minutes. Calm down. Then I should you not, they say one of the greatest dialogue pieces I have ever heard in the history of dialogue. You want another? You trying to get me drunk? No, I'm trying to sober you up. What? Are you trying to get me drunk? No, I'm trying to sober you up. Shut up. Let's jump ahead. Basically, we have bartender men that just happens to know all the answers to life and how to live it. We love a Mufasa. He then visits his ex-wife, which I guess his life-giving advice did not work with her. Jason, your father's here. <laughs> bickering between ex-lovers makes a transphobic joke for no reason. It's good news. Hi, getting the sex change. Yikes! Then after that weird moment, they have a conversation about how their third grade son is really smart and they gotta put him in smart school, but they can't afford it. 13,000 semester? Oh no! Plot. Then suddenly, bartender who apparently has the answers for everything can't seem to find the answers to his bank account. How relatable. Son comes yeah. out of this room looking disturbed and then dad bartender man says some weird quote along the lines of, things may look bad, but that's just hiding the goodness on the inside. Literally. And at this point, I'm just praying to God not every scene of dialogue ends with some weird ass Disney moral. Now we are back at the bar, and what angry black lady ain't angry anymore? And gives bartender man flowers for his kick ass advice. Kick ass advice. Sure. And a job listing for a radio host that can suddenly answer all his financial problems that she had no clue about. What a great plot moving device. Random customer that you called a fucking idiot a few minutes ago comes back with flowers. Flowers and a resolution to all your financial needs. Cause when a bartender gives me advice, I always come back with them with a new job. Take notes. But the weird part about it is that she hands him a slip of paper with like simple words on it. Wanted radio host. Like that's it. Oh no, it also says women and minorities are encouraged, but we'll get down that line later. Let's not acknowledge that. On this paper with three lines written on it, let's not acknowledge one line of the three. Let's wait until that's important. But it's just on a sheet of paper, like just typed out. Like she took the time out of Beach. her life. Open up Microsoft Beach. Word, right? Type out this information. Print it and then cut the bitch. And then give it to the bartender. Like she couldn't give the bartender a full ass piece of paper with like the listing circled. No. She had to present it in the weirdest way possible. Seven minutes in. We are seven minutes in. And so far, all we got were some moral lessons and a lady with a lot of time on her hands. This is a bartender midday, as it seems. Then bartender man is like, I don't wanna be famous. Then the lady was basically like, quit being a little bitch and go get this 
it's money. But like with morals and shit. Because this is that type of film, apparently. There's no guarantee they'll even want me. It says right there, wanted. Oh my God. She full out gave him a slip for a radio show host with no information. Clear as day, Times New Roman. Minorities and women encouraged to apply. And then straight up says it's perfect for this white man. <laughs> Hold on to your trousers for this plot twist. His application gets denied. What? Holy shit! Oh fucking hell, man! Wow! This one radio station did not accept his audition, and suddenly all is lost. Could he apply to a different radio station? Could he make a fucking podcast or something? No, no, no. That doesn't exist in movie world. There is just one station. Now jump ahead. Next morning, I guess. I don't know. Bartender guy sees two angry black ladies fighting on TV. There goes more of our representation right there. I'm very happy of this progress. Camera zooms in on the slip that just so happens to be sitting on this table still. I was a black woman. That'd be perfect. And jolly good God, does he have an epiphany? And then this is where it gets Choicey. Low grease, you got no spunk, no spark, no sizzle. I think you're a Sagittarius. But there's a good reason for that, girl. Low Quisha don't play that. Low Quisha is born. Do you guys see my Christmas tree right next to me? I saw my Christmas tree up, by the way. Am I weird? Uh -huh. Low Quisha is born. And when I tell you this man's version of a black set is just a lot of grunting of words oh. Oh. with a sassy twang at the end, oh. then it was just a grunting oh. of words with a sassy twang oh. at the end. Sound like he watched one episode of Murray and decided that is all. All I need to know. He saw the opening credits for Medea Family Reunion and was like, that's the answer to black people. It is at that point I realized I was watching what is labeled a comedy and have not yucked once. This could actually work. You sure? And yet it did! After a weird iPhone, I mean smartphone scene. I got a smartphone. But you said you hated smartphones. He gets the job. They want Loquisha. And then there's a drunk oh, guy. Right. For some reason, I guess comedy reasons, but once again, no yucking on this end. Not a single, <laughs> but how would this white man get past an entire radio station being a black woman? Shut up. Because he never meets them. They never meet. Not until like the final scene of the entire movie do they see this man, this white ass man pretending to be a black woman. Like they have no clue. For the entire movie until the end, he never meets them. Never even really talks to them ever again after that one phone call. And then suddenly he's a radio host. And who does he enlist? in helping him create this show? No, not the black lady that gave him this job listing. She already did her part in achieving his white destiny. So we're gonna do what every movie does to a female that's already done their part to expanding the plot for the main head white man. We turned her into a love interest. Cause a black woman has no further additional need in a movie where a white man pretends to be a black woman. No, make her a love interest, cast her aside. He gets help from another black man. Whoa! Representation through the Yazoo! All these black people helping this white man achieve his goals. Wow. The Green Book will be proud. And how does he get this man to help him Rachel doze all his way through the industry? I'll throw in free drinks. For the light. Okay, I'll do it. Alcohol! Wow! And he does it. They go to this empty ass studio with no suspicions from anyone whatsoever and he does some more grunts. Uh, he literally sounds like Colonel Sanders. Metal at midnight is dead. They left the building. You live with Loquisha. <laughs> And then, surprise, his radio show is a success. Taking over the radio waves with his sassy twain and $20 fill up. And also says, <laughs> all these years, white people are the slaves. Interesting thing. Ooh, I hope the police don't come in here because I, I, I'm gonna do all this shit, bitch. I'm Loquisha. And then, like any award winning, high quality, critically acclaimed movie does, at one point after this random ass montage of success and growth, he says, everything's working out just Perfectly. Then things don't work out perfectly. Holy shit. Show ends up being a success. The radio executive people that he still has not met yet have decided they wanted to move his show from the nighttime to drive time, rush hour, whatever. Number one, Colonel Sanders impersonator is like rock on, but black sidekick is like hold your horses. The show is gaining so much traction, so Loquisha should have a face. So they audition different types of black women to see who can give the best Loquisha type performance. Yeah, another weird microaggression towards trans people. Loquisha. 
Thanks for coming in. You just gotta squeeze that in real quick. It's not like I'm offended, I'm just like tired at this point. Lady offers to suck their dicks and they deny it and then boom, Asian representation. We are all making it guys. We are making it together, straight to the top. I am so proud of us. Then they found their loquisha. She does appearances. They put her on horribly CGI'd and Photoshop billboards. And then more and more success. Yummy, yum, yum, yummy, yum, 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 yum. Black lady from beginning is written back in and becomes the love interest, like I said. And through the entire scene, there's like this weird filter placed on the main character's face for like no reason. There's this weird glow around his eyes. It's just like there. Once you notice it, you can't unsee it. And then they're getting it on, right? They're getting steamy, hot and heavy. The world is watching this interracial racial relationship for me. He can't be racist. He's into black girls. But then bartender man's loquisha accent randomly jumps out. Oh, you don't know a joke. What did you just say? Because of the sexual chemistry he was getting from a black the woman, the black woman inside of him decided she wants to come out. Damn, that feels good, girl. I guess. I don't know. And then suddenly, after this great makeout session with this black girl, loquisha just won't go away. Oh, loquisha's too much. What just always talking back. Wrong. Being happy and sassy like the black woman she is. You're out of control. You can't control me, white boy. It is at this point this movie wants us to believe that throughout this entire plot, bartender man, I don't know his name at all, used his loquisha voice so much that it started to develop another entity within his head. Good luck. But alas, they push that shit and Loquisha is just off the you wall. In and who does he turn to in distress? His mother. A character we have not met until now. 60 minutes into a 90 minute film. And that scene lasts for a good like 30 seconds. And then you don't see her again for like 10 more seconds at the end. And all she does, I shit you not, tells him to listen to Loquis, yells at him, then randomly accuses him for being gay. Are you gay? And then tops it all off with yet another microaggression towards trans people. Are you sure that you're not feeling like you're a woman trapped in a man's body? What is your problem against trans people? This movie seems to cycle in the same five jokes like over and over again in hopes that it creates some type of cinematic breakthrough. And surprise, it doesn't. He then uses his loquisha voice to give himself advice in this very weird back and forth scene that I ended up having to skip because I was cringing so hard that my asshole started to hurt. Whenever he used his black woman, my asshole wanted to not exist. And then he suddenly succeeds to talk a woman off the ledge. You know, something you would hear on a normal radio broadcast during rush hour. Suddenly people love Loquisha even more. Oh, Loquisha is a savior. And everyone's talking about Even it. Oprah. Who decides to offer Loquisha a TV show herself through email, written by Oprah Winfrey herself. Hi, Loquisha. We love your show and want to offer you a show on own. We believe you deserve a much larger audience. Can you please contact us ASAP so we can get you set up? We're excited to work with you. Sincerely, Oprah. Because creating shows on national television is as simple as a single email from Oprah Winfrey. Honestly, it might be. He gets an email from Oprah and humbly denies it. And Black Psychic is like, bitch, what the fuck? The money? Bartender Man is like, we already got the bag. So let, and I quote, not do something idiotic and mess this up. Ladies and gents, the man that started this entire fiasco and recruited people into helping him in this fraud has now a higher conscience. And all the black people are pissed. Oh God, this is the direction we're going now. This white man just wants to gain enough money pretending to be black and peace and these black people are just bothering him so much. All these black people that he recruited in this fraud are like, let's take this up a notch, bitch. If we're going this, Far. And he's like, no, that's bad. Where is this going? So Miss I'm the face of Loquisha I comes know, barging in. Not. I really should have learned their names. And basically says, because he denied Oprah, she deserves a higher cut in this entire fraud factory. And then said, the greatest line anyone has ever said in the history of cinema itself. Are you blackmailing me? No. 
I'm black femaleing you. I am black femaleing you. Oh, happy day. Life is going great for us. And because all the black people around him are stepping out of line, what does white savior man do? I'm signing off for good. He pulls the plug on the entire operation. Oh no. Black people can't play right. So ain't nobody getting this bad. Oh, y'all Negroes want to speak out of turn and threaten me? Oh no. We killing this shit. Mm -mm. I'm Loquisha. Suddenly white man that was in the wrong for using a characterized black entity is now the golden man of the hour. And then the black lady becomes the joke. She tries to take over the Loquisha broadcast and miserably fail. Where are we going with this? At this point, there's like five more minutes left of this movie. Like it's almost over. And my face is like, are we really about to take this turn? Is this really how this movie is about to end? But then the white man comes back and saves it all. Oh shit. Green Book would be impressed. He comes down with this big old, we gotta be ourselves. Moralistic, holistic healing goes back on the air, admits everything, and then things come out okay. But then here comes angry black lady. Being oh. angry and black. Oh no. With like an entire scene with him trying to justify his micro racist and misogynistic choices. I don't know. It was a very weird scene. Once again, butthole gone. At that point, I was just more focused on the fact that I was almost done with this film and I can move on with something else in my life. But then the movie ends with him getting the radio show back as himself and Loquisha. What's your problem? It was both and people were okay with that. People knew that and people were fine with it. And moved on and that's the happy ending of that world. Yeah. I don't know either. I feel like the moral of this movie was supposed to be people may make bad choices, but it's the goodness inside them that matters. Okay. I mean, everyone thinks they're good. Everybody's actions is justified in their own head for being good in some point or some form. But does that mean it's good in general? No. It was racist. So let's get down to it. Was the movie racist? Yeah, duh. But not in the I hate the blacks kind of sense. More in like the plain ignorance. <laughs> Like at the end of the day, no matter what moral was pushed in his film, any be yourself, kumbaya, my lord, mumbo jumbo, he still used the characterized voice of a stereotypical black female. And as we've seen in history, black people, especially black females, haven't really been portrayed the greatest in media, or haven't really been portrayed at all, or fully until like the past recent years. That fact alone adds this like thick layer of racial ignorance throughout the entire film. So was the movie racist? Kind of. But was the movie racially ignorant? Hell yeah. Overall, the movie seemed to give off more of a misogynistic tone than anything else. I'd like to think it was just the bad dialogue and the writing and the semi-okay acting, but every single female character in this movie came off either nasty, mean, needy, irrational, oblivious, or just like plain flat. But at the same time, everyone in this movie was pretty flat. So maybe it was equality after all. Female character were all just pillars to his storytelling of his story, which is quite hypocritical since his story involved the actions of a black woman. And it was even weirder because there were moments in this film purposely written by this main character man where people were calling him racist and misogynistic as like it was some way to counteract and counterbalance actual racism and misogyny showcased in this writing. It was like this movie was trying to say he can't be any of those things because there's goodness in his heart. Because yes, the goodness in your heart can be read so easily over the fact that you are pretending to be what you think is a black female for the sake of money. Hey bitches, fuck you. So I'm just finishing up editing this video and I feel like I left out like a good portion of like my opinion overall. This movie was rough. I feel like if this movie was like well created, well written, well cast, it probably could have been something very well satirical and funny and a good chuckle and maybe some overall moralistic meaning. But it wasn't and here we are. We're just left with a movie about a man that committed fraud cause bitch, it was fraud. He's walking in there getting money from radio execs who 100% believe they're signing a check to a black woman named Loquisha. That's fraud. The problem with this movie was that every single thing was this man's choice. Like there was no point in this movie where this man was backed up into a corner and had to force himself to do the things he was doing. Like he made the decision to do what he did. Could have picked up an entirely different career choice, way to make money, but no, he made these decisions and then tried to turn it all around and say that this man is a good guy after all because he has empathy. He's empathetic. He's good. Don't look at his decisions that he chose to make. He's good. There was no force in this film. Watching an hour and 30 minute movie about a man making decisions.
decisions that no one told him to make and then trying to turn it around and act like he was the good guy after all. That's the part that I can't fully lay myself on. You're good because you're empathetic. If you were empathetic, then you probably wouldn't have made some of these decisions that you made. All I see is a man that's very oblivious to the society that he lives in. Saw an opportunity to make some money, decided he didn't care about the faces or the people that he is standing on the backs of. As long as he's getting money to send his child to some smart school that he doesn't have to send him to, you could just enroll your kid in Kumon or something. Save a buck. But he's empathetic at the end of the day, so he's good and still gets everything he wants. That was also the problem. He didn't lose shit at the end of the day, but then did a bunch of shitty shit. That's what happens when the main character is also the writer and director. This man wrote and directed a film that he ended up coming out okay in after making so many decisions where he shouldn't have. If he would have like fully thought this out, maybe had actual people of color join his team in writing this entire situation, then maybe I would have approached this movie in a different light. But the fact that he was the sole writer and director of this entire film makes it seem like he just saw a topic that would be seen as controversial, use it as a tool to gain views and conversation towards him, just so he can get three different paychecks for one project. Which is like kind of a genius con, but like, bitch, reviews for the movie are also all over the map. I never talked about that. I don't care that the movie had some type of moral. I noticed them. I acknowledged that. But at the end of the day, there was still some problems in this movie, and I'm going to critique it. My favorite review was a guy that wrote something along the lines of, White guilt is dead! Ooh, baby! I don't know if this is the film to make that type of statement. At the ground point, this entire film felt like it was written by someone that was outside of it all. Which it generally was. More of the story, start writing from what you know first. Or you might make something like this. And also just start a fucking podcast. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Shout out to at Hodge Kadum and at Rhyme the Writer for retweeting my last video. Comment down below. What would you do if Oprah emailed you? I'd die. Literally, I'd just come back. It'd be gory. Wouldn't it be funny? It'd just be gross. Last video, I asked you guys what you do during the winter months, and that one crackhead said I don't remember shit. But that definitely doesn't beat Tiny Speshman that told me they nut a lot during the winter. I also asked you guys what fabric would you use to dress yourself on a red carpet, and someone replied, shower curtain. What fabric is a shower curtain? There's multiple fabrics, girl. You gotta, you can't, you can't. Plastic, polyester, bitch. There's some silk ones, bitch. I think there's some even made out of granite, bitch. We can do that. We can try that, bitch. Anyways, I'm gonna go. Haven't eaten yet. It's already 4 p.m. My name's Mac. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, babe. Whoa! Loquisha. 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 Whoa. <laughs>